If you've been following the channel, you know that I changed the S2000 from a drag car into a drift car. And today I am finishing up, you can't see them because I'm on cinematic mode, the Ford 8.8 .8 rear end swap in here. So I've already got the pumpkin in place, gonna put the axles in here. And then what I'm gonna do, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to you guys about some of the things with this kit. So this is a Granis racing kit. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna go over a couple of the different features of this kit. I really like it so far. Once you get things out from back here, there is a ton of room and this stuff is super easy. So if you have an S2000 or you have any car that the rear end is a bit weaker, whether you're drag racing or drifting, keep watching. Maybe you learned something with the uh, 8.8 .8 stuff. This is my first time doing this. It's actually a, a diff out of a 2010 Explorer um, and it mounts pretty easily in there it's i'm like really really shocked it looks kind of big but i'm really shocked like it looks like it's supposed to be there so stay tuned the first thing i noticed with this kit is these axle stubs so they're six bolt axle stubs uh the kit comes with these drive shaft shot 1000 horsepower axles um but these stubs are so much beefier than the oem stubs they're really really thick you know you're not going to break this stuff. And I opted because, again, it was a drag car, but now it's going to be a drift car, which is an awesome thing because I opted to go with a spool. I believe it's a strange engineering spool with Ford Performance 410 gears. And then I was running a power glide that had a 1.82 first gear with a one-to-one -one second gear. That's how most power glides are. At least the second gear, first gear changes from like 178, 180, 182, something like that. Uh, but I'm going to run a ZF, a BMW ZF Trans in this now on the K-Series back there underneath the sheet. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm going to spend a lot of time in third gear, but it should be pretty fun. So I'm going to get these axles in here, talk about some of the uh, benefits of the kit, some of the other stuff that I've seen with the kit that I really, really like so far. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some spray away glass cleaner, just clean these up really good. They've been sitting out a bunch of dust on them. And then I'm going to grab some grease. I literally grease <laughs> everything anytime i'm uh trying to stab a shaft or anything like that into any other surface whether it's transmissions these stub shafts those sorts of things i like to put some grease on these so i'm gonna go ahead and do that all right so i got that lubed up let's see how easy this is to stab in here also i don't know if you if you're someone who's had open differentials and things for a long time i don't know why but i absolutely love the way that having either an lsd or in this case a spool looks like in these different all right well i needed two hands so i couldn't get that on video but what i do to get them these ones all the way set is i will stick a block here and then simply tap it with a uh just like a small dead blow mount like that those look like they are both seated also i did a measurement because one of the axles is uh, a quarter inch longer and this side has about an extra inch of space from the lip of the hub to the lip of the hub on the knuckle. So I'm gonna put the longer axle on that side. All right, well, car things. Ran into the first issue with these. So I got the other axle in the car and I'm going to tighten it down. However, I couldn't get this hardware in on the one that's installed in the car. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? So I thought maybe the front side of this lip was threaded because I started threading it in. You'll see it and just, I'll show you in a second. Uh, but they're not. So these ones, if you can see, move freely in and out of here. The other problem I don't, I don't like, like obviously these are super thick. I get there's going to be tight tolerances. These are big axles. Totally get that. However, if you ever bought drive shaft shop or looked into drive shaft shop, fucking thousand horsepower axles, they're not cheap. So because, and I'll show you what to do. So these, I have to thread them in uh thread even though they're not threaded to this top piece uh, until it's about halfway then with this on here give it a little tap on the top so that it goes all the way through the problem is it's pushing off this grease cover now here's my my issue that i'm a bit concerned with right now is that the only thing that holds the grease cover on is these right and let's see i'll do it with you guys when you're on here or i'll do it with you guys on here my problem or concern rather is that one of these is going to be tight to get on. So if you notice, this one is like, won't move at all. That one moves freely, right? So these, the holes 
that are on these are not machined perfectly, which fucking sucks. Let's see. So you'll see what I'm talking about here. So you go to push this on, obviously it's resting against the boot there. That's what won't let it go in. So push down a little bit on the boot, no big deal, right? And obviously these boots are supposed to be fucking strong. Yeah, so like this one, this one won't even go past that first little thread. So what you gotta start doing is essentially threading it into this piece, right? See how it's going in there now? We're threading it past this piece. And then once it gets past the boot, like I did with the other two, I'll give it a little tap and see if it goes in. Like I said, my fucking concern here is that it's going to, I need to get a tripod, don't I guys? <laughs> Stand by bread. Okay, sweet. So that one worked. So I thread that one in maybe an inch and then I was able to just push it right past. So I didn't have to put any pressure on the grease boot here. I think next time that I do this, hopefully I don't have to do this maybe ever or for a long time, right? <laughs> this rear end and these axles are supposed to be bulletproof. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll put the stub on out of the car and then I'll put all of those in together. If any of you have a recommendation, I already put one piece of hardware in there. If any of you have a recommendation on how to do that more efficiently, I'm all ears. Let me show you this one though. So if you look in here, see it's resting, it's resting up against the boot and it's kind of at an angle. So I'm gonna have to thread all of those in until I can uh, get them pushed in there far enough to start catching some threads on the actual axle stub pain in the ass. So yeah, I think next time what I'll do is I will put the axle and the stub shaft together outside of the car and then slide those in all at once, especially, in, like I said, on the back end of this car, there is so much room back here, especially once you get all the, the nonsense out of the way, there's just a ton of room to work. So it should be pretty easy. This is, and like I said, this is only a minor inconvenience. My concern is that it pushes the grease cover off here and uh, it gets fucking grease everywhere. But apart from that, <laughs> it's going good so far. Yeah, so that wasn't the case at all. That one actually went in really, really easy. And you see how this one's lined up fine. So maybe there was just one of them that was misaligned a little bit because they're all fairly loose now. I'm definitely not as concerned as I was a few minutes ago. I was like, fuck, this is gonna be a pain in the ass. But uh, it's not because they actually all move freely now. So if you're doing this in the future, keep that in mind, especially if you're particularly using the thousand horsepower range axles. Damn, I must've got water all over that near the last time I washed. This is in my garage. So um, if you're using those axles, just keep that in mind that you're you might be uh, better off putting the stub and the axle together outside of the car and then uh, putting them into the differential that way rather than do it the way that I'm doing it because this driver's side is gonna be a pain in the ass. So all finished, got everything installed, axles in. Let's talk about this kit. Now, there's a couple things that I want to show you guys, if, especially if those of you who are interested in this kit. So if you notice right here, right there on the S2000, so, right there, is where the differential normal mounts are. The thing that I liked about this kit in comparison to the other kits for the S2000s that I've seen in the past is that this kit, if you see that, that black bar right there, so not this tab, but that black bar right there, that's actually, there we go, that's a better, that's a better view of it. So that actually goes all the way across and that's a piece of the kit. Uh, you can do, the, you know, the 500 horsepower axles or the 100,000, uh, 100, the 1,000 horsepower axles. I went with the 1,000 horsepower axles. This kit is crazy easy to install. So the back side is going to be just the regular S2000 mounts. So, which how crazy is that, that the Ford 8.8 .8 mounting points, uh, specifically for the, I think it's the 2010 to 2014 Explorer, um, I'm not super familiar with the Ford 8.8, so if you are, drop them in the comments. I don't know too much of the differences of them, uh, but those ones bolt right up. So I used the same S2000, the stock S2000 mounts. Obviously, those aren't stock ones, but the stock location. So the kit comes with the bar, the hardware, and the axles. And uh, I chose to get the core from him, and then I had a local guy here that does Ford stuff uh, build the rear end for me. But yeah. The only, let's talk about the, like I said, that's the positives, is the fact that the mounting bar is there. Dude, this, this whole kit is super solid. The engineering's on point. Uh, the axle, or the issue that I have with the axles, it's definitely not Granis's fault, obviously. 
Uh, I don't even think it's drive shaft shop's fault. I'm sure it's wherever they're sourcing uh, that particular part. So no issues there. I got everything in, not a problem. If you can see, everything fits super nice. Uh, it's really close to tolerances right here, but obviously the car is lifted up. So as soon as the car comes down, uh, I'll have more, more room for that boot right there. And then, <laughs> unfortunately, I have to get back under here tomorrow. So putting some fluid in the diff. And uh, I realized that there's not enough room right there. I thought I was gonna be able, I like these bottles because normally you can just squeeze the shit out of them, but I couldn't get enough downward angle to do it. So my girlfriend brought home a shampoo, new shampoo today. I was like, hey, did you just get new shampoo? She's like, yeah. So if you ever run into this issue, you can use a shampoo thing in here. The problem that I ran into is uh, it only goes down that far. And so it started not being able to suck any more out of there. So I'm gonna order uh, fluid pump i'll just have it overnighted or whatever from amazon and finish this up tomorrow but yeah this is all gonna be squared away oh, i'm super super stoked about this like i said i know this is good for s13 guys s14 guys s2000 guys uh who what else what else are people putting 8.8s and miatas supras that kind of shit so any of you who are having problems with with breaking diffs if you know anything about the s2000s these diffs are glass <laughs> and i plan to drag race this car initially so that's why i ended up going with this first super stoked with this kit i'm gonna put it down on the ground in a second make sure it's got adequate clearance on these axle boot right here oh let me talk about the, th the things that i don't like about the kit i'm not much of a complainer when it comes to stuff anyway uh there is no instructions with the kit I, not necessarily because the kit's really easy to put together, that, so it's not necessarily would have needed instructions to install the kit, but I am a torque guy. So I'm gonna need to call drive shaft shop, figure out what the torque on these uh, stub shaft bolts are supposed to be. And then I guess what I'm gonna do is look up the subframe torque specs for the S2000. I do have a repair manual so i'll look up those torque specs and i'll most likely just use the torque specs from the oem s2000 to torque the rest of this stuff this entire car is going to be nut and bolt checked before it ever you know hits the road again anyway because this everything has been taken off it literally this is a, a full full build so i've taken everything out of this car. The video there so everything's out of this car i've just started putting all the interior stuff back together it's got a Whitfield Carmoly 10 point cage, just cleaning stuff up, I'm trying to make this look as clean as possible. Engine bay is next. I uh, just started putting the front end stuff back together as well. So definitely can't complain. I dig the car so far, having a blast with it. It's gonna be fun. See you on the next one.